These and other channel supporters make my videos possible. If you have a vintage computer from the 80s or 90s, its original real-time clock battery is most likely dead. For some computers, replacement is as easy as installing a new coin cell battery. For others, the battery is embedded into a module such as the Dallas DS1287, and new versions of those modules have not been manufactured in years. With help from my friends at PCBWay, who have provided the PCBs for this video, I have decided to build one of Necroware's NWX287 replacement real-time clock modules instead of trying to rebuild my old DS1287 or risk sourcing a, quote, new replacement DS12887 module. There's no time, like the present, to get this project started. My story starts with a computer. How does yours? To build the NWX-287, to replace a Dallas DS-1287, DS-12887, or DS-12B887 module, you need five parts. A benchmark BQ-3285S real-time clock, a 32.768 kHz 6 picofarad crystal oscillator, a CR1220 or CR1225 surface mount battery holder, a strip of turned pin headers, and the PCB. I would like to give a big thanks to my friends at PCB Way who provided the PCBs for this video. Next time you have a project needing CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, or, of course, PCBs, go to PCBWay.com and check out all the services they offer. With their friendly service, high quality, and fast turnaround, you'll be building your project in no time. Also, be sure to check out their shared projects section, where you can find cool projects such as this NWX287. A link is in the video description. Thanks again to my friends at PCBWay for providing the PCBs for this video. Now, back to the build. To assemble the NWX-287, you'll first need to solder the RTC and crystal oscillator, then the header pins, and finally the battery holder. I decided to solder the crystal oscillator first. Depending on which crystal oscillator part you pick, you may have to bend the leads, but the one I bought happened to have the pins preformed for the footprint on the PCB. Next, I soldered the real-time clock chip. This SO or SOIC footprint is relatively friendly for hand soldering. To solder chips like this, I apply plenty of flux, solder one corner, adjust alignment and solder the opposite corner, and reflow the first pin to relieve any stress from adjusting the alignment. I then solder the remaining pins.
I accidentally got solder into a couple of header pin vias, so I used some braid to clear that solder. Next, it is time to solder the header pins. I recommend using turned pins like these. Remember that the oscillator and the RTC chip go on the bottom of the NWX287. I'm using an old breadboard to keep the pins aligned. Go ahead and solder all of the pins, though you will have to cut a few short later in the build. Alternatively, you could just not solder pins where they need to be cut. Finally, it is time to install the CR1220 or CR1225 battery holder. I had some trouble fitting mine as it was slightly too wide to fit between the pins. I was almost to the point of sanding the sides when I got it into place as is. Do apply a liberal amount of solder as these two terminals will take the strain of installing and removing batteries. And that's it for soldering! I used some 99% isopropyl alcohol to clean the excess flux off the board. Wow, that looks good. Before testing, we need to trim a few pins off. When using the BQ3285 for the NWX287, you need to trim pins 2, 3, 16, 20, and 22. Pin 1 is the pin beside the box labeled 3, and the pins are numbered counterclockwise. In most cases, you also need to trim pin 21. However, you probably need pin 21 if the old RTC module also has a pin 21, or if the motherboard has a clear CMOS button or jumper. Note, this is not an exhaustive list. As for the box that is labeled 3, I am going to mark it since this is an NW3287 module having been built with a BQ3285. In the future, I might need to build one of these with a BQ4285, so I might as well prevent any future confusion now. Though sure, I could just turn it over. And now, it's time for a quick test. I picked my Emerson 8000 EC as it needs to have an RTC module installed to work properly and, being an XT class clone, it's probably choosy about which modules it likes. Luckily, this module works great in the Emerson 8000 EC, but I did notice one minor quirk you have to change and save the date in setup before the DOS date and time commands can successfully set the date and time. I'm not sure if this is an issue with DOS 3.3 or with the BIOS. Thanks to Necroware, my Emerson 8000 EC isn't stuck to forever booting the version of DOS and ROM. And thanks to PCBWay, I have plenty of high quality PCBs to build modules for future acquisitions. If you, too, have a vintage computer that requires the RTC module for proper operation, and you don't feel like trying to rebuild the original module, I highly recommend this project. 
Links are in the video description. Until next time, take care and God bless. These and other channel supporters make my videos possible. You can become a channel supporter too on Ko-fi or Patreon with tiers starting at just $1 or local currency equivalent and your name in the credits starting at five. Coffee tips count too. For more information, visit my coffee page at coffee.com slash JDMCS or my Patreon page at patreon.com slash JDMCS. Links are also in the video description below.